we'll see. Welcome everybody and happy Thanksgiving. It's lovely to be able to sit with you as we all head into the holidays. Um, if your family is anything like mine, you never quite know what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, I think that's just how families are, but yeah. And if you're quarantined and you're not with anybody today or tomorrow, please know that um, the community that we're creating here today hopefully will sustain you through the holiday and help you not feel so alone. So I was thinking about what I wanted to do today and um, uh, I actually was telling Misty before we, before y'all came on the call with us that um, I was in a mountain biking accident last week um, where my bike got stuck on a route and I flew over the handlebars. Um, so I have been thinking a lot about healing, um, healing my own body. And I've also been spending a lot of time in nature and in the woods um, up here in Door County. And I have been thinking a lot about healing the earth and healing nature, um, which I think a lot of people are really thinking about because of COVID and everybody kind of going inward a little bit more. And um, it just feels like such an important time to heal, to heal ourselves, to heal each other and to heal the earth. And it feels like we're on a big pause. That's what it feels like to me. A big Sarah, yeah. can I have you um, speak up a little bit? I'm getting some people saying that the audio is is hard to hear. Also, um, if you, everybody at home, if you just want to, or in the office, if you just want to also turn up the volume on the device you're watching on, that might help too. Thanks. I'm going to try putting my AirPods in just to see for a little bit if that gets better. Um, How does that sound, Misty? Um, it's, it's a little louder on my side. Um, Everybody, if I could get someone from the audience to to let me know, get some right yeah, better Give us some feedback, okay. please. On if the, is that better? Okay. Yep, I'm getting a lot All of right. better. Sounds good. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're trying something a little bit different today. I'm gonna end up playing a mantra for you um, that we can all chant to. Um, Snadam Kaur is a, a spiritual singer who I'm gonna use one of her recordings to play for you, and so we're messing a little bit more with technology today and uh, it's not really my forte. So thank you for your patience. Thank you in advance. Um, so back to what I was saying, I've been thinking a lot about healing uh, myself, the people I love, the people I don't know, but care about, which is all of you and everyone else in the, on the planet right now. And then um, the earth, the earth really needs our our stewardship and our healing. And so there's a, there's a special mantra that I've shared with you before, but it's been a long time. And it's called the Siri, Gay the Siri Gayatri mantra. And um, it was shared in the 70s. It's, it's obviously um, very, very old from the yogic, the Kundalini yoga tradition. Um, but it was shared for the first time, this special science was shared um, by a teacher uh, named Yogi Bhajan. Yogi Bhajan um, shared this mantra with the, with the world, I believe in the 70s. Um, and so I just wanted to teach you a little bit about it first, and then we are going to chant it together. And I have a recording that's about 13 minutes long. So we're going to use that as um, the beginning of our meditation. And then we'll sit in silence after it, because there's something um, about mantras and um that that is very powerful and the sort of the receptivity that it creates in you and the um, groundedness and the healing, it's best done if you can do it and then sit afterwards and sort of like, almost like you're mm, steeping in the sound, in the sort of the, the sound that even though you're not, um, still saying it, it's still reverberating in your body and in your energetic body. So um, I, I've i borrowed a lot of the teachings from the spiritual singer, Carrie Grossman, who um, I talked about last time. 
and Carrie's on Insight Timer. She a, has a really beautiful voice. I highly recommend you check her out. It's Carrie with a C, Grossman. And so a lot of what I'm going to say today comes from a teaching that she did on this particular mantra. So um, you can either watch the recording if you like this, or you can go and listen to Carrie's explanation, which is where um, most of what I'm going to say is coming from. I just want to give her the credit for that. Um, so Carrie um, describes mantra in this beautiful way. I, I love the, her definition of mantra. It's, um, she says, mantra is a sacred sound formula that can help to awaken the love within us. It's a sacred sound formula, um, which I just love the sound of that itself. And, um, and in my practice with mantras, that is my experience is that um, bhakti yoga, which is devotional yoga is, is all about opening up the heart. And I feel like as we go into the holiday season and we're in this crazy time, and we're spending time with our families, which for many of us can, can trigger um, complicated things. Um, I think having our heart open uh, as much as possible is good, just gonna benefit all of us. And um, many people are using this mantra right now um, because there's a recognition generally in spiritual communities that this is a time of great healing. It's a time of great potential for all of us. So I wanted to share it with you. And if you like it, I would encourage making a practice of it and doing it for a few minutes each day. And you could listen to Carrie or uh, Snadam Kaur, you know, who is this, the singer that we'll be listening to in a little bit. And um, so the Gayatri, uh, the Sri Gayatri mantra, the, the words are very simple. It's eight syllables and I'll explain to you what each one means. Um, so the words are, and I'd encourage you to, to repeat after me, Ra, which is R-A, Ra, Ma, Da, Sa, Sa, Say, So, Hung. And notice the hung is not drawn out. When when Snotum sings it, it actually does sound drawn out somehow sometimes, but the way it's pronounced correctly is is short. It's hung, H-U-N-G. And you sort of like feel a contraction in your belly. I don't want to get too much into that though, because I don't want to make it too complicated for today, since many of you are probably new to mantra in general. And um, this is, you know, it's not just a two-word mantra, it's more complicated than that. Um, so mantras can be sung, or they can be spoken out loud, or they can be whispered, or they can be um, repeated internally. Um, and just like toning, a lot of the importance and the, the um, healing of mantra is the vibration, the sound vibration. Um, the yogis, Sanskrit is a language that is, is highly evolved and each of the syllables, um, they go with a certain essence of things. So the, the yogis could tell what the essence of something was and could understand what the sound is that went with it. Um, I feel like I'm not describing that well, but um, for example, I'll explain to you what these particular syllables mean and what the essence that they convey is. And um, they, it's like they ignite those things inside each one of us, inside your own body because of the particular frequency and vibration that gets created when you say it. So the first one, Ra, is the energy of the sun, which energizes and purifies. So saying Ra is connecting us to that which gives energy. Ma is the moon. And the moon is aligning us with receptivity. It's, it's a cool um, energy and it's nurturing. So ma is the moon, da is the earth, which of course grounds us, helps us feel secure. It's a lot of what we've been doing with these visualization of the roots. And um, it's also the ground of action, da, sa, 
is infinity. Sa is totality of everything. It's impersonal, but it also is that which lifts us up and attunes us to the healing energy of the totality of the universe. It's expansive and it connects us. When we say sa, it connects us to that. And then in the next four syllables, again, we have sa, which is the same thing, infinity. And then we have say, and say is more personal than sa, it's, but it's still the totality of experience. It's sort of like, I was reading about it, it's like the feeling of a sacred thou. It's like saying thou. Um, so is a personal sense of identity and hung is the infinite, but it's the vibrating and the real sort of juicy part of the, in the, inf the infinite. And um, so when we say so hung together, it's I am thou or I am that. Um, and as many of you know, who've worked with mantras before, a lot of mantras are I am that and it's two syllables. So, so hung, the end of the eight syllables, that's what it means. And what you're saying is, it's like a reminder. I am that, I am all that is, I am the divine, I am the totality of the universe, I am the, inf the infinite. And um, it's, it's like, we're sort of um, getting into this state where we are remembering really our own true essence, really our own divine essence, really that we're all made of love. We're made of the vibration of love and that's who we really are. And as humans, we get very confused about that and feel very separate from one another and from nature. Um, but that is the, the grand illusion, right? That is, that is the grand confusion and illusion that somehow we are all separate and I feel like right now, um, as many other people are saying, it's just such a time to recognize that we aren't separate. And even though we're, we're separating ourselves physically from each other, it's such a poignant and important time in history because I think maybe for the first time, I, I, I can't say that for sure, I'm not a historian by any means, but certainly during my lifetime, certainly during most people's lifetime, the whole world is going through the same thing. So there have been times where there's wars, but not everyone's involved. You know, the whole world is going through this collective energy. And I think many of us at many different points are feeling the negative aspects of it. But what occurs to me is there is really tremendous potential for healing and growth and, and transformation, both on an individual level and a collective level. And so what I wanted to do was share with you this mantra, because when we do mantra and when we do mantra together, we are creating this vibrational force. And there's plenty of studies on um, prayer and um, you don't have to look at this as a prayer, but um, it's, a, it's like a wish. It's a wish. And you can use this for your own healing. You can use this as a wish for other people's healing. And you can use it. You can use it for any kind of healing, really. You can use it for the healing of the earth as well. So um, the other thing that, that Carrie suggests and that um, many people suggest with mantra is pairing visualization with mantra. So I'd invite you to um, use a visualization of golden light or what, whatever comes to you as um, connecting you to the divine, connecting you, you know, and you don't need to use the word divine. I, I try to use a lot of different words because I don't want to offend anybody. I don't, you know, many people don't, don't, like to use the word God, many people do. So, um, it, you know, you could just as easily, if you're an atheist, substitute the word, word emptiness or flow or energy or, so please use your own vocabulary here. It, it to me, it's all the same thing. Um, it is the infinite, right? It is the, the truth of who we, each one of us is. 
And um, so please make it your own, make it your, what resonates with you in terms of your visualization and your languaging. Um, so one way to do it would be to picture yourself immersed in a golden light uh, if you're doing the healing for yourself. And what I've been doing with this 13 minute practice is I've been doing the healing for myself first, um, and then I've been doing it for others, and then I've been doing it for the earth. Um, there is a mudra, which is a hand positioning that goes along with this mantra. Um, online, I wasn't able to find the self-healing one, but I learned from a Kundalini teacher many years ago that you can actually take your hands and put them under your armpits like this. And when you do the mantra Rama Dasa, you will feel the vibration um, through your hands quite acutely. So if you want to do the mantra like this, you can. Um, what I was able to find in my research and what is the more common thing to do is my understanding is to tuck your elbows in by your sides and your hands are out at a 45 degree angle and your palms are flat and they are up, okay? So it's almost like you're sending out healing energy from your hands. That is the mudra, that is the hand positioning. Um, so I'd invite you to do whatever hand positioning you want and if either one of those is inaccessible for you today or uncomfortable, you know, sit however you're comfortable. And if you wanna lie down and do this, that's fine too. Lying down, standing up, you can do it however you want, however your body is most at ease. So when we couple visualization with mantra, it's like there's this synergistic effect and it's more powerful. Um, Carrie was talking about how when we visualize something, the visual cortex in the brain actually, it, it sort of reacts as if the thing is actually happening. So even though our eyes are closed and we're just imagining something, the brain actually responds as if that thing is true, as if that is happening. So one other thing I've been adding in when I do this mantra is I have been picturing the world in the most harmonious, beautiful way that I can picture it. So I kind of just allow my mind to, um, it's kind of like daydreaming in a way, but I'll, I, I will often picture um, all of us gathered, you know, and I'll picture us in a circle or I'll picture people smiling at each other um, and with really open faces and open hearts and, you know, strangers, I'll, I, I'll picture, people being outdoors and being surrounded by the beauty of nature and just people being happy, you know? And so you can imagine what your own um, world looks like that's full of peace and harmony with no sickness and with no barriers, with no separation. So I, I would really encourage you to picture the world as you want to see it, the world as you hope it will be. Because I think it's that kind of thing that is going to help each one of us heal and it's gonna help the world heal. Is if we each have our visualization of what we want to happen once this sort of quiet underground time ends, then we'll all be in a better position to create that kind of beauty and harmony and peace with each other and with the earth. So I'd invite you to use your most powerful imagination skills, your childlike imagination skills and really turn that on. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, so it's said that when we combine visualization with mantra, that the power of the visualization is ex is amplified. It's exponentially amplified. So that's the other reason why I wanted to teach you how to put those two together. All right, so just to say finally, this mantra, it taps into the energies of the sun, the moon, the earth, and the infinite to bring very deep healing. 
and it holds within it eight sounds that stimulate the energy or kundalini flow within the central channel of the spine for healing. And it has the potential for bringing balance into the core of our energetic body and can flood it with new and healing and revitalized energy. So I'm excited you're here today to experience that. And I would encourage you to practice it as often as you wish. And I, I thank Snadam Kaur for her sharing um, of her voice. And so I'm going to take my AirPods out in a little bit and I'm going to share the computer sound and turn on the sound of the mantra. I would encourage you for a little while to chant out loud and you can either do, you know, the self-healing mudra or the outward healing mudra. And you could use this one for self-healing as well if that's more comfortable for you. Or again, you can sit with your hands in your lap however you want. So let's just take a few minutes, just a couple short, short minutes to just ground. And then I will turn the mantra on. And, um, and when the mantra is over, I will turn it off and we can sit in silence for the rest of the meditation. So just like any other practice, if your mind wanders away from the mantra, it's no big deal. It's, it's what minds do. Um, no sense in fighting. And actually using mantra and chanting is one really fun way to give the mind something to do actually. And so many people like mantra and singing for that reason, because it's sort of this sneaky way of drawing the mind into, it's like, it's like you're pulling the mind into love, right? You're pulling the mind into the infinite and um, you're giving it an opportunity rather than fighting with it, rather than getting, you know, all heady about it. So it's sort of like you can relax into it. You can just relax into the sounds and the vibrations in your own body. And if it feels good to just, you know, listen, then just listen. And if it feels good to just recite it inwardly rather than outwardly, then do that. Whatever, whatever feels resonant with your being today is, is what you should do. All right, so we'll sit for a couple of minutes and then I'll turn on the mantra. I would encourage you to either close your eyes or just allow your eyes to be downward and soft. And let's begin by just coming into your own body. Starting to notice the feeling of your feet or legs on the ground. Noticing the pressure of your tailbone, of your sits bones against the chair or floor or cushion. Just feeling the weight of your body. And seeing if you could soften, invite the body to soften, invite the body to release that way that we hold our bodies so tightly is, it's an old protection that most of us have. It's a shield against the world. So just for a little while, see if you can soften and open and allow in the beauty of the mantra. Begin by feeling your breath. Feel the coolness of the air at your nostrils. And feel the warmth with the out breath.
May the fruits of our practice today spread outwards in all directions and help to end the suffering of all beings everywhere. I bow to each one of you and I'm so grateful and appreciative that you've come here today for your own healing and the healing of the world. May we each come to know our own true essence come to know that we truly are each very bright lights with each of us a unique gift for the world. Thank you. Thanks for coming. And I hope you have a really good Thanksgiving and a really good day. And if any of you have questions, I'm happy to take a few minutes to answer them, if I can. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for all the Thanksgiving wishes. Peace to each one of you as well.